Shalom, royal family. The class you are about to hear is taught by the Honorable Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wafe, many years ago. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Visit us at www.yahweh144000.com. Also, royal family, you can enroll in classes designed for the Godhead at www.universityofyahweh.org. Enjoy. Welcome to International Headquarters, Nation of Yahweh. Let us turn to Exodus chapter 23, verse 16. Exodus chapter 23, verse 16. 16. Dealing with the second of the three annual festivals, the lion for the so called black man of America. The other two being Passover and Tabernacles. Let us read. And the feast of harvest, the first fruit of thy labor, we found that food in the field. And the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. Verse 17, read. Three times in the year, all thy males shall appear before the Lord God Yahweh. You who want to know what that passage of scripture means, they get my table last night. And it will explain to you the mystery of that verse to some great detail. Certainly does not exhaust my wisdom on the scripture, but you can enjoy last night for a long time. Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus chapter 23. Beginning at verse 15 through verse 22. Let us read. And we shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheep of the way offering. Seven Sabbaths shall be complete, even unto the morrow. After the seventh Sabbath shall ye number fifty days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord Yahweh. Ye shall bring out of your habitation two way loads of two tenth meals. They shall be a fine flour. They shall be baken with leaven. They are the first fruits unto the Lord Yahweh. And ye shall offer with the bread seven lambs without blemish of the first year, and one young bullock, and two rams. They shall be for a burnt offering unto the Lord Yahweh, with their meat offering and their drink offerings, even an offering made by fire of sweet savor unto the Lord Yahweh. Then ye shall sacrifice one kid of the goat for a sin offering, and two lambs of the first year for a sacrifice of peace offerings. And the priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruits for a wave offering before the Lord Yahweh for the two lambs. They shall be holy to the Lord Yahweh for the priest. And ye shall proclaim on the self same day that it may be an holy convocation unto you. Ye shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a statue forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. And when ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not make clean riddance of the corners of thy fields. When thou reapest, 
Neither shalt thou gather any gleaning of thy harvest. Thou shalt leave them unto the poor and to the stranger. I am the Lord your God, Yahweh. These particular scriptures, some of it applies directly to the face of weeks. Some of it, as it is written, dealing with sacrifices of kids and goats and lamb and all this thing is pure heathen. Absolutely heathen. And if any of you think that we are going to run around building altars, and offer lambs without blemish on a physical altar, you'll be waiting forever from the real God Yahweh. Now, if you ever see this kind of thing go on, then you can be assured that these are the false people. Heathens attempting to deceive the world. Heathen, an unconverted individual of a people that do not acknowledge the God of the Bible, Yudhe Yahweh. A person who does not believe in God, Yudhe Yahweh. A person regarded as uncivilized or uncultured or unenlightened. One who adheres to a religion that does not acknowledge the God of Israel. Of or related to heathens, their religions, their customs. Heathen, unbeliever, infidel, pagan, heathen, Gentile, atheist, disbeliever, heathen, agnostic, skeptic, doubter, heathen, secularist, apostate, heretic, heathen, backslider, antichrist, worldly, unrepentant, heathen. Second Timothy 2.15 requires us to study so that we won't be ashamed of what we do and be able to rightly divide the word of truth from error. Why is there a requirement to divide the word of truth? To rightly divide it. What does that mean? It means that the truth has some things surrounding it that's not right. Or you could just take it like it is. There's no need to divide the truth, rightly divide the truth, if it's all truth. The Bible is all truth. But this particular set of passages, on a physical level, terrestrial level, is false. Yahweh is not a stupid God. And you can't make any sense out of this. And you never will make any. Nobody has made any sense out of it until this day. And you won't ever make any sense out of killing some lambs on us, getting blood, cooking animals with the guts in it. And what you gonna do? Even you know to take the guts out. And all the stuff in the guts. You know what I mean? Can you imagine cooking all that stuff? On an open fire? What, what you gonna do with that? You take the creator, if you don't want guts with the stuff inside the gut, cooked all up in with the meat. If you don't, how many of you wouldn't want to eat that? Or what God do you think want to eat that? So I'm not causing a shadow in the Bible. I'm telling you that you have to learn how to rightly divide the word of truth. 
And I'm not going into the details of this tonight. But you know I can. Because I do. But I want to carry you on a little bit. And I just wanted to call your attention to those who are out there. And of course, your experience last night, if no other time, tells you, oh, there's so much for you to learn here. But I don't want to get hung up on the verse 15 on verse 16. I don't want to get hung up on those seven and what they mean. Uh, I don't want to get hung up on the Sabbath because it's really not about the Sabbath. What is it about? The seventh day. See, Yahweh didn't say keep the Sabbath holy. He said keep the seventh day holy. So if you have the wrong calendar, guess what else you have wrong? The seventh day. What are the calendars that are being used today? The lunar calendars? The Roman calendars? In fact, you don't know how many calendars there are and the difference between them and how they're being used today because you've never studied them. So what's the seventh day? There's only one calendar that can give us the seventh day. What is it? The solar calendar. Who gave the solar calendar? Yahweh. And what people do you think would keep solar time? Only Yahweh's people. And since Yahweh's people are not keeping solar time, something happened to them. That gets to be the issue. The enemy of Yahweh cut Yahweh's people off from the knowledge of solar time for a reason. And the reason is, Yahweh said, when my people keep the seventh day holy, that's a sign. Where is it? Exodus 31, 13. So Sabbath was used as a day to substitute for what? Seventh day. The reason I said Yahweh didn't say the Sabbath at the point was Sabbath had been corrupted to be Saturday through the Jews' influence. And it's not so. Saturday is not holy, more holy than Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. All the days that Yahweh made is holy. Can you imagine Yahweh made one day more holy than another? All the days are holy. What's more holy about Saturday than Sunday? Who made Sunday holy anyway? Ha <laughs> ha. See, you have to study to know these things. Who, cha who changed from the seventh day to Sunday? And when? See, you need to go pull out all your encyclopedias. If you don't own any, go to the library. Uh-huh. Study Sundays and study Mondays and Tuesdays. See, you study all those days. You don't even know where those days came from. Who, who, who come up with that thing called Monday? See, y'all didn't, didn't name no Monday in the Bible. Where is that? You know where in the Bible do I see Monday? Maybe it is. I haven't found it. Is it in there? Where, 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 where y'all come up with this Monday and Sunday stuff anyway? Come on, tell me. You're smart. You went to college. Tell me, why do you say Sunday? And if you're so smart, where did it come from? When? By who's authority? You went to college? What you go to school for when you just run around talking about? What are the days of the week? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So why do you say that? Why do you say that? Anybody go to school and learn that ought to know why they say it. I'm not going to get hung up too long. I just want you to know you're in a foolish position. You're running around saying things in your life and you have no basis for it. 
So don't challenge me about no goat and no lamb being on no dumb altar, boy. Don't you, don't you, you don't even know why you say Monday. <laughs> See, anybody that don't know why they say Monday can't question me about no lamb being cut up and blood drained on no altar talking about that belong to Yahweh. How you do? Shush, hush. You hush. Hush your mouth. Hush your fuss. Doesn't it make you feel a little ashamed that you don't know where these things came from? I mean, you, you know what? You taught your kid to be as dumb as you. Your kid come up and you say, well, what's the days of the week, kid? And you taught your kid to say the same dumb thing you said. And your kid is just as dumb as you about where it came from because you couldn't teach your kid what you didn't know. So I already know your children know nothing about no Sunday's origin. They have no knowledge of this history. It's documented. You can find it. I did. Trust you to find it. You can find it. It's findable. Yes. Does it make you feel a little dumb to say that all your life and don't have any idea where it came from? <laughs> Y'all looking at me so funny. See, that's what Feast of Weeks is all about. Oh, welcome to Feast of Weeks. <laughs> One of the laws of Yahweh required for the black men of America to keep. But in keeping it, and we're told to count so many days, huh? Like 50. First, you have to know how to count. And you shouldn't want to know why it's 50. But first, you need to know about Sunday. Yeah, but you thought you got away, didn't you? You can't consider yourself intelligent and don't know where Sunday came from. You ought to just stop saying it and say what Yahweh said. I mean, you, you just as well stop and say what Yahweh said because you don't know why you're saying what you do. You can't argue with me when I tell you Yahweh gave he named one month. I bet. Now where's September come from? Hmm. What? Where January come from? I mean, where that come from? How long has it been January? How long have people been saying January? Only all of your life. But what about January before your life? Did January come into existence when you were born? You thought this Sunday was it. What about January? <laughs> Is January the first of the year? Who's here? It's not the first of the Creator's year. Who ought to know better than the Creator when the year begins? He made everything. He set time in motion. Y'all always set time in motion. So he know when time began, so he know when the month began, he know when the year began. And you know what number the day began on? See, Yahweh's number began with one. Where did one come from? How many know where one came from? Came from zero. Who's the author of zero? Yahweh. Now you know the difference. How many know zero and one and to ten and all that? How many know that? So I have some gunshot folk in here. You, you so shy now about what you don't know. Won't nobody raise their hand. So if you know so much, I want you to count from zero to one. All you smart folk, all you smart people, and you who hold PhDs in math, come on. I've talked to PhD mathematicians and they couldn't count from zero to one. But I always could. I knew I could. I laughed because they couldn't. They asked me, could I? I said, I said, you to know. 
you to find out. You need to know. See, I know. It's for you to find out. See, she can. Counsel is either or what? Because, see, I can. You have to be able to get from zero to one. In the same way I get from zero to one, I can get from one to two. So where did January come from? <laughs> when did January start? Being called January. Where did March come from? When in history did March start? It's sure written in the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation. Revelation didn't even say Monday was coming. So don't question me when I teach you something here in Exodus and Leviticus. See, don't you ask me no questions. Why did our enemies hide from us? Why is it left out the Bible the seventh day and what it is and how you get to it and how do you know it mathematically, historically, and with proof? It's meaning that somebody wanted to cut God's people off uh, from the side. For at least two reasons. If the world does not see the sign of Yahweh in existence, then they don't have to pay Yahweh any attention. Because he doesn't exist to them. That leaves them free to create their own God. So the sign of the true God is missing. So that all the people created their own God. Because they had no sign that the true God exists. So whoever God's people are can only prove it by keeping not the Sabbath Saturday, but what? The seventh day holy. See, that's what the law of feasts and weeks kept established. You have to be able to count seven perfect Sabbaths. Hmm? A Sabbath is a word for seven days, seven days, seven days. Hmm? You have to keep a perfect seven sets of sevens. And in, in, in order for it to be right, you have to have a knowledge of the right calendar. And therefore, when you keep have the right calendar, you can keep the seventh day holy, and the world will know you belong to Yahweh when your day is different from everybody else's. It makes you peculiar when the whole world is going by a calendar and you come up going by another calendar. That forced the world to ask, whose calendar are you going by? And you say, solar time. They don't ask the question. Now, that's they know what solar means. The sun's time. The only way the, only way the people can go by the sun's time is for the sun to come and establish his time. And the way you know the sun is on the earth is there begins to be a people obeying the sun's time of keeping the seventh day according to the sun's time. Called solar time. Solar is the representation of the sun. Called sun. That's why it's called sun. In Spanish, they call it el sol. Hmm? All they have to add is the ar. That word at least preserved that it's supposed to be solar. El sol is the sun.
Well, I told you I could get you hung up. Didn't I? So, there's a lot to learn, isn't there? Now I'm leaving you something to go study. So when you come back to me, then I can communicate intelligently with you. And you can then grow in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of Yahweh from your reference of study. Notice, I'm not standing here and saying you have to accept what I say. I'm saying go study. Because I trust what you'll find. I read the whole library. I know what you'll find. I already read it. Go to anyone you want. Study. Ha ha ha. See, I am. <laughs> and it's important for you to know. This is, I mean, something as important as a sign between you and the Creator. And the Creator saying this is a sign between you and Him. Something that important is enough. This is a sign between me and you throughout your generation that you may know that I am the Lord Yahweh. That's sanctifying you. It takes a peculiar people with, with a certain set of genes and chromosomes to want to identify with this. See, a, a fellow that, that's not one of the children of Yahweh by his genes and chromosomes will say, what difference does it make? Well, does it, when you ask for an orange, does it make a difference if somebody hand you a tomato? Does that make a difference to you? Well, that's how much difference this makes. Yes, everything makes a difference. So don't try to argue with me. It makes a difference. All of these scriptures make a difference. And understanding them makes a difference. All right, let's move on. Numbers 28. Welcome to the Feast of Weeks. I get hot when I step on people's toes. Starting at verse 26. Read. Also in the day of the first fruit, when you bring a new meat offering unto the Lord Yahweh, after your wheat be out, ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work. Now we ought to really love that. Don't do no servile work. <laughs> Verse 27 through 31 is heathen. I can explain it, but it's still heathen. I can spiritualize this for you and accept every one of those verses under spiritual condition. You can't spiritualize these verses because your mind is terrestrial. And when your mind is terrestrial, you'd be going up looking for some offering to burn. You'd be looking for matches and kerosene and gasoline. <laughs> some torch. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, you will. Because you're a child in the mind when it comes to the word. You have to wake up and find out that the Bible is written in at least nine different ways. Figuratively, literally, prose and poetry, huh? allegories, similes, metaphors, parables, prophetically and symbolically. There's a bunch of ways. Where you count on your fingers and toes, it's a bunch of So you don't know when to read the Bible prophetically or literally. You don't understand what symbols are or why. I have some around these walls here, so you don't know what all that is. Thank you for listening, Royal Family. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to this 
channel. Praise Yud Hey Waf Hey. Have a glorious day in Yud Hey Waf Hey. Shalom, royal family.